in academia in the beginning in the late 80s and then into the 90s, there was this idea being uh, sold, uh, particularly by organization economists, that basically you could break up big firms and uh, create more value because the corporate offices of these things was only overhead. And uh, that seemed wrong because actually if you were, uh, if you believed in markets, you'd looked around the world and you saw an awful lot of big uh, multi-business firms and they were prospering. And uh, so I thought I would spend some time exploring what I called corporate value added. And I did that. And all of a sudden it occurred to me that one of the things that was most closely associated with the creation of real value and sustained over long periods of time was management of succession. That, and it's not, as soon as you say it, it's, it's pretty obvious that if you can continue to have good leadership, that's going to be very important to a company and or to a nation for that matter when we study history we see the same thing um, so uh, I did begin to explore and study I studied CEO succession and that led to the book because that's the way academics uh, communicate once they've got a, a body of knowledge Well, the, one of the critical findings was that the way you manage succession is basically the way you manage the company. And uh, companies that have problems with succession usually also begin to have problems with their business. Uh, the two tend to go together. Uh, companies that are able to manage succession well have been investing in the development of leaders, of their people, at the same time that they're developing businesses. Uh, in, in any uh, period of, significant period of time, like it's several years, five, ten, it's very, very hard to have a successful business without great people running it. Uh, it this is a tough world we live in today, lots of competition. So that emerged very clearly that as, a, as one finding. And then I, that, I mean, there are lots of elements about which we can talk about if you want as to what it means to the way you manage the company. Management succession begins with who you're recruiting, how you bring them on board in the company, the, the, the career paths that are available for them, the training they get, the mentoring they get, the, the way in which they are developed. Uh, so uh, a critical question that comes up all the time is, uh, we have a critical job that's opening up that needs to be dealt with. Who do we put in? Well, in the world you just described, the, the, the simplest thing is to find the person who can probably do the best job with it and put him in at that, or her in at that point. But that's not what you really want to do, is you want to also say, who has a good crack at doing that job, but would really grow because they'd done it? And this, the story that is often used on this point is that in the career of Jeff Emmel, growing, he was brought in to turn around the uh, home appliance business during a period of a big recall and it was a nightmare but he will is often uh, says in discussing this that he'd never be CEO of GE had he not had that really tough particular experience. An inside outsider is someone who is growing up within the organization in just the way I've been described was recruited well, developed, and uh, is uh, identified as having potential and given more responsibility. But 
somehow has managed to also maintain a sense of where the world is going and, and what is going to have to change in the company if it's going to be successful in the next period. So it's quite typically the insiders are great, but they by the time they get up to the very top, they've drunk the Kool-Aid and they really believe in their organization to the extent that they don't see the need for radical change. They know certain things have to change, do this, do that, and they tend to see things in terms of what's, what, what you could do step by step, <coughs> excuse me, what they could do step by step. But the world is changing very, very, very fast, and, and, and that's not enough. Uh, and it's often critical to see that real change is needed. That's what you look for. I mean, typically, I mean, we, we know, we see them in any organization we've been with. They are often a little, they tend to be smart. They tend to be difficult. They don't always have the kind of, uh, they don't necessarily play well with others. Uh, so they need some work. But that's what it's all about. I mean, if, when you find those people and you can give them the management skills they need to budget well, to create teams, to lead teams, to, to those are things you can really help people with. It's very hard to give them that breadth of perspective, that mavericks, the willingness to see something and go after it even though no one else necessarily sees it. And in organizations, you look for people like that and you try to develop them. That's a good question because obviously a lot do and some succeed. Um, Generally, if you're going outside, it means that the organization has failed. Uh, it has failed, either its performance is so bad that it's clear that within the organization there isn't someone who can see what needs to, needs to change, or they simply haven't developed the, it may be successful, but they, for reasons such as you described, where there's a very strong leader that's never developed others, there's no one to take over who has the real strength. Um, there are uh, organizations, I mean, I think, frankly, uh, a lot of schools, uh, school systems, or, I mean, need change. And they they can't get it from within because from people within don't have the skill set. Uh, one of the problems in universities is when you promote from within. Uh, very often you're just promoting a good department chairman or or worse, just a good professor. It, it's very few schools have a management development program. And I mean, we at, at Harvard Business School, we work very hard to make sure that those faculty who have the talent get a chance to administer uh, over a decade so that when the time comes to pick a dean, there are usually four or five people who've been running things and you, we can get a sense of whether they'd be a good dean. 